So this is an insider that we use all the time to save a whole bunch of time getting images of our items to list. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to hop over and look at an easy way that we save a ton of time getting images of odd and weird shaped items. So here's the scanner. It's the duplex scanner. Uh, it's a DS510. I can't tell you any other model below this, but most all the ones above this pretty much work the same. I've had many, many people reach out to me. I know quite a few people that have one of these types of scanners. It's one I always recommend to get. Again, there may be a billion other brands that work great, but I just happen to have uh, tried the Epson. It works fine. I bought a second one. It works so well to have a backup. Again, same model. I bought a used older one. This one costs like um, 125 used with the cables shipped on average. That's probably about what you can get it for. Now, objects like these, these are uh, cigar box labels. These are ones that I've acquired over just a short period of time. I plan on listing all my cigar box items like these here all at the same time. These are all individual labels. Now these are outside labels. These are the outer labels of a cigar box. The inside labels would be the big ones. All original. These all date to about 1870 or so. Old reliable. Some of these are pretty interesting ones like this one here. This one here. Now Objects that are cut off like this, a lot of times people hesitate to, to run through one of these. The square ones will go okay as well, too. Sometimes the paper's really fragile. People worry about that. Um, the round ones, though, are usually what I hear people uh, talk about, as well as things like this. Most all of these will be able to go through the duplex scanner if you handle it correctly and carefully. Anyway, most of these items will scan through here. Uh, we're just going to scan through some of the odd rounded objects. The key to this is, in fact, let's just see if we can show you. This is where it pulls into the machine from. So if you can get it in this general area and trip this little sensor right here, this is a lock and a sensor from what it looks like. It will pull it on in here enough so it'll scan through the double plates. There's a glass plate down in here, one right there. That's the glass plate. And there's another one identical to it there. So if you can get it in there, standard labels and things or standard pieces of paper that are square are super, super easy. But some of these other items may not be as easy to someone who hasn't done them before. Again, rounded sides have it in there straight at the dead center of the machine, and it will go right through the machine 99% of the time. It will still correct the skew sometimes correctly, and then other times you have to go back in and fix them. Now this is doing them one at a time, even though it's a continuous feed, it can separate them one from the other. So it's really not a big deal to run through oddball objects like this here in the duplex scanner. Now, why would you want to uh, specifically use the duplex over some other one? Well, the flatbed scanner will take you four times as long, bare bones minimum, I would say, with the time it takes to scan the bed. Now, I know you can do several at a time on there, but this is so much quicker than any other method to scan. So if I can get it to go through the scanner, I'm all set. Again, it has to be dead center, but if it's dead center, I don't usually have any issues running it through the machine like you see here. Again, round ones or not. As long as it's dead center, the bottom of it, it'll come through. It'll pop up on the screen once it processes them. Sometimes you may do one and you realize that it cut off part of the image. Now, all you got to do sometimes with that as well is run it from a different direction. It'll pick it up differently, and it cuts it off differently as well. Sometimes it's whether it's facing or not facing. That's another aspect sometimes I run into. Again, the same principle, just make sure that the center of the item, however it's shaped, is at the center of the scanner. No guidelines. You can't use guidelines or anything like, like with that. Now, there's a third way you could try it. Again, you're still going to save time even running it through three times, most all the time, because it's just so quick with the scanner, is to run it in on an angle here. And let's see if I can't get the scanner going. So we're going to run it in on an angle.
And that way, usually you'll get it as well. So let's look at a few of these other type of items. Even something like this is pretty easy to scan. Again, if you do it right, you got to hold it in the dead center. And there is actually a line right there. There's an arrow on all the ones that we have. So just stick it on in there. And that's with most any of these sorts of objects. As long as it's dead center, even this little shirt die cut, Sapolio soap, Maybloom Palmer, now this is like a perfume bottle. As long as they come out through the other end, they pretty much scan the whole item. Now once in a while, they won't get the whole item. It'll drag on or something because of the length. And then only those would have to go through the other scanner. Now, some items are easier than others like these. I think this is from a fair, if I'm not mistaken. Hagertown, Hagerstown Fair, the Diamond Shirt Company. So this is a double advertisement piece here. Uh, pretty interesting in my opinion. But these are usually pretty easy because it's a wide tube shaped. It doesn't have to be squared off, which is an assumption most people uh, don't understand. Yeah, a lot of people just don't understand that you can get other things in the scanner without a problem. As long as you put them in there in the right direction or in the right spot, it will scan a lot of different other things. Again, every one isn't going to go through here, but if you're careful, you can get a lot more through the scanner then you would have to worry about going through like and getting the flatbed and running them on the flatbed. Again, the flatbed takes like three or four, even five times as long to do in some cases. And this is usually far much quicker if you can get it to go through and you have it the right angle and the whole works. If you've done this a while, it'll be pretty easy and you'll get a lot better results than, uh, you know, just throwing a couple in here and hoping them they come out right. Now, one other thing I'll tell you is small items like this little small label off its smaller bottle will go through there as well. I can even get them a little smaller, about the size of a baseball card, the small Victorian baseball cards. But you got to be very careful when you stick it in the uh, actual scanner area and just be patient. As long as it comes out the other side, 99% of the time, it will have scanned just fine. So that one should be fine on there as well. Again, any of those sorts of things do fit through here. They do wonders in the machine. Let's do one more small one. It's an old label from Lewiston Finish. Uh, that's a, a fabric finish, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a Dresden label made in Germany. You can see it's very small. And that's about it. It's through there. Even small little round objects sometimes can go through there. Again, trial and error. If you do a bunch of these to test it, you'll know what will or won't go through there and what you can cheat on this. It's, again, far easier to do a duplex scanner than it ever would be to do the flatbed, and it's far quicker. It'll save you an immense amount of time. It looks like it may have went through, but we'll, again, skim through these in just a minute here, and I'll show you what came out and what didn't come out from these. So this is the file here. Let's just open up and let's just show you real quick. So these are the cards that were scanned. As you can see, uh, they came out pretty nice. This is pretty much all I'm going to do. When I get these onto eBay, I won't have to do a thing. I could crop around them if I so wished. Now there's a few that may be a little crooked that I may have to um, move around on one of my apps or something like this one here. Uh, you know, you can actually tilt those through most of the apps here, even on Windows or something. But I've got one I can instantly just cut it out as long as there's no distracting marks. It will just uh, mask around it, and then, boom, I can straighten it up instantly. So worst case scenario, I have to straighten up one or two of them. But as you can see, here's one I'd probably leave because it's the back. Again, you can flip them. You can still turn them in here. These are the ones we tilted on an angle. Uh, again, I'm just going to quickly chop these up on one of the apps I got. But as you can see, they pretty much all came out. I may have to turn a few or do something like that. But overall, they came out very nicely, fully usable, and it's just a quicker way. If you use the flatbed, I'm telling you, it takes like four or five times as long to lay them out, flip them, lay them out, and the whole works. This does both sides at the same time. Now, this one didn't come out quite so good. I did try it again. The back looks fine, but the front doesn't. Now, sometimes when the back is crooked and the front isn't, or vice versa, you might have the uh, lining it up in case it's like skew uh, a fixer on. If that's on, turn it off and try it again, because most of the time that does fix it. 
this is something else that happens. Sometimes it stretches the images because it doesn't quite get them out uh, like it should. So if you hand slide them out so it can't sit there and kind of drag for a second, this doesn't happen. Just FYI. Um, and this one's much better. It is still chopped, so I don't know if I'll use that one or not. But overall, you can see that it did a fairly good job all the way across. Much quicker and easier and simpler than the flatbed. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. A Jumposaurus, kids. He helps me make fruity pebbles. And soon as Fred makes them, I eat them. Fruity delicious flavor. See? I put down fruity pebbles and Jumposaurus sends them over to Barney, who... Eats them. Right, <laughs> Barney. Eat. What? Barney, you're eating up fruity pebbles fast as we make them. But Fred, post-fruity pebble cereal's part of a balanced breakfast. Why, you... <laughs> Yabba-dabba fruity do.